this is an atom. Well, this is what an atom looks like. Well, this is just a representation of what we think an atom looks like. Well, this could get tiring, so I'll just tell you, this is the Bohr model, an early representation of the atom. Even earlier, we have things like the cubic model, and even earlier, it was just philosophy. But how do we know what an atom really looks like? Democritus was born around 360 BC and is often referred to as the father of modern science. This is because he had the crazy idea that everything is composed of atoms, which are physically, but not geometrically, indivisible. That between atoms, there lies empty space. That atoms are indestructible, have always been, and always will be. That there are an infinite number of atoms and kinds of atoms, which differ in shape and size. Of course, he was wrong, but he stumbled upon something amazing. Hopping back to the 1900s, we arrive at J.J. Thompson. A century ago, he was the first to suggest that one of the fundamental units of atoms was more than a thousand times smaller than the atom, suggesting the subatomic particle now known as the electron. Thompson discovered this through his explorations on the properties of cathode rays. Thompson made this suggestion following his discovery that cathode rays could travel much further through the air than expected for an atom-sized particle. He estimated the mass of cathode rays by measuring the heat generated when the rays hit a thermal junction and compared this with the magnetic deflection of the rays. His experiments suggested not only that cathode rays were over a thousand times lighter than the hydrogen atom, but also that their mass was the same in whichever type of atom they came from. He concluded that the rays were composed of very light, negatively charged particles, which were a universal building block of atoms. And this led to his plum pudding model. But there was still a far way to go. We then reached the next model, the Bohr model. It depicts the atom as a small, positively charged nucleus surrounded by electrons that travel in circular orbits around the nucleus. Of course, this was just a tad off too. Due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, it can't be known to be in any location at once. Instead, we rely on a probability function. So scientists described this idea of an atomic orbital. There were hints of the existence of orbitals based on the nature of spectral lines in early spectroscopy experiments. The letters S, P, D, and F stand for sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental. These lines were clearly different from each other, but the scientists naming them had no idea why. Orbitals can also be derived from Schrödinger's wave functions that are based on the particle wave duality of an electron. According to this, the wave function can be interpreted as a probability density function for the location of an electron. Based on this interpretation, an orbital is the space where the electron may be found with a probability of 90%. For the electron of a neutral hydrogen atom in its ground state, this orbital is called an s orbital and it's a sphere. What you're looking at is the first direct observation of an atom's electron orbital, an atom's actual wave function. To capture the image, researchers utilized the quantum microscope. Scientists blasted a hydrogen atom with lasers and ionized electrons escaped and these are the images we got. The wave function that we should have seen, compared to the wave function we did see, lines up quite nicely though. Of course, as technology improves, we will be able to not only have a better image, but also a better detection. I could go into what an atom looks like according to quantum field theory, but that's a whole mess of crap we can dive into later. But that's how we know what an atom really looks like. Keep searching. The universe is ours to explore.